So I want, <clears throat> wanted to make a brief video. Uh, this is another cybersecurity video, not a watching the world burn video. Uh, my deepest sympathies go out to the Russian people. Uh, major terrorist attack has taken place there. Uh, right now we know of 60 people dead and uh, God knows how many casualties there are in uh, this uh, catastrophic event. Um, who knows where that's going to go? You know, I mean, it, all it takes is one trigger for nuclear war. Just saying. So we're going to get back to reading a bit about cybersecurity. Now, I've made uh, a couple of videos. I did a video on uh, on how your car is spying on you because I'm trying to, to, to keep my videos up to date. But at the same time, I have to go back to the book. <laughs> and by the way, I... I want to put pressure on our country, our choice. I don't know what the hell's going on. I went up there. I made a video. Uh, I, I thought that they were going to put my book up on their website and make it available to you. you like I said, I you know I only have a limited amount of time. I mean, I was just up in Virginia, uh, well, last week, and now I'm back. Uh, so you know, I mean, they, you know. And of course, the car was a disaster. I had to wash it today. But let's let's get back into a little bit of cybersecurity for old people <laughs> and young people, because it seems like there's a lot of people that just need basic information. And by the way, this is to make fun of the mainstream media. This is to make fun of the mainstream media because this is what you hear when you tune into NPR or or uh, the Washington Post or anything else, because this is all the advice that they give. And it's just, it's just a joke to me because this is the bare minimum that you need to know about anything about cybersecurity. So let's, uh, let's get into number 10. Jokes disguised as links are a great way to take your browser to a, a malicious website. Once again, your friends and relatives' computers have been cracked and someone is watching everything they do and type, but they don't seem to care. Have you ever thought about that? I mean... How many times do you get these weird emails and, and, and it's from uh, one of your neighbors or your friends or and and then they go, well, I'm sorry, I don't know where that email came from. Well, <laughs> guess what? You've been cracked, man. You you've been hacked. I mean, why in the hell are you allowing that to happen? And then send out a, a, a phishing email to your friends and then just kind of go, oh, well, you know, I'm sorry. Oh, all right. So let's keep going. Block pop-ups and never click on them. Yeah. How many times do you have pop-ups coming on your computer? Scammers like to put up a flashy pop-up that tells you about how they have detected a virus on your computer. Have you ever seen that? Because it comes up and it's getting a flash in red and it's saying virus detected, virus detected, virus detected. And, and, and of course, people are stupid enough to click on the link. But anyway, let's just keep going. If you click on their pop-up to remove the virus that never existed, they will install malware on your computer and then will uh, your computer will become infected. I will show you browser plug plugins that uh, will block this activity. Of course, my book covers all of this. And, and by the way, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to get the book out to you. It's just a work in progress. I don't know where our country, our choice is. I, they... In fact, I got a, a text message, and he said, do we have your permission? Well, hell yeah, you have my permission. I gave you the damn book. I don't even know why they don't post it on their website. But, you know, I, I you know, look at me. I get 15 views on, <laughs> on YouTube. Our country, our choice, has 250,000 followers. So where do you think my book is going to get the most views? All right, so let's keep going. Check your browser's security settings. For example, in Windows Internet Explorer Medium is the lowest setting you can use. The book recommends raising that to medium high. Microsoft explains what these settings will do when set. And we'll talk, And by the way, it's, it's, it even goes beyond this because Microsoft defaults to the Google browser. Google censors everything. I mean, search for that cybersecurity guy at Google. <laughs> he won't even find me. I don't exist. Go to Bing.com. Go to DuckDuckGo.com and search for that cybersecurity guy. Uh, guess what? You're going to find me. Uh, so don't use Google. And that's the default browser that Microsoft uses. 
The internet offers up all sorts of free software, a lot of which is presented in this book. By the way, I have a lot of uh, open source uh, software presented in my book. Someday, maybe I'll get it to you. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. But malware can install from any free game, screensaver, toolbar, open source donationware, or free anti-software. When you download software, make sure you're using a website you know and trust and scan the download with your anti-malware software before loading it. So I used uh, Windows Defender and I use Malwarebytes. Now, are there other tools that you can use to scan? Uh, and by the way, a, a lot of them come out of Czechoslovakia and Russia. I mean, <laughs> those are some of the best tools that you can use. But I, I'm just saying, so let's just keep going. Use other anti-software to scan it before installing if you have it. You should also check the signature or check some of the download file, which I teach you how to do in Chapter 5 of this book. Performing this added step will ensure the file you downloaded is not corrupt or legitimate. So what I'm, what I'm saying there is that these files, the, the, the anti-software and everything else, it's available on multiple sites. And... All right, well, I mean, obviously you have to get the signature. And if you learn about encryption in my chapter five, you'll learn how to check the file and make sure it's, it's legit. All right, so let's keep going. This is step 14. Stories around about phishing attacks on NPR and talk radio. The millions of dollars that corrupt corporations, organizations gain by using these attacks are hard to fathom. I admit I had somewhat dismissed the success of these types of ploys as an exaggeration by our media. However, NPR and news stations continue to describe these attacks and warn people not to fall for these seemingly crazy fishing schemes. I mean, my God, when you get an email, it's, <laughs> it's got a link in it. Don't click on the link, man, especially if you don't know who it came from. And I understand it. A lot of times it comes from somebody you know. But, I mean, come on, man. You, you got this weird link. It's got all these weird characters in and it says click on me. And it's just going to install software on your computer. One example of a phishing attack that I listened to on NPR was a phone call from someone claiming to be from Microsoft saying they had found a virus on your computer that needs to be removed. To remove it, the victim gives the caller some personal information, helps them log into their computer, and then uses a credit card number to pay the attacker to fix the problem that did not even exist. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I, I, I want to, I mean, I, I'm sorry, you know, people fall for this. How stupid can you be, right? How stupid can you be? What I, fi what I find uh, hard to believe is that people would fall for this. My own personal experience is otherwise. My parents are aging, well, my parents are dead now, uh, and falling for some of the predators' advances. Maybe not in this fashion, but others. They are occasionally talking about uh, uh, taking them into spending money on expensive and questionable items that they really could do without. And for the record, I too was fleeced many years ago by Charles J. Gibbons. By the way, if you didn't know who Charles J. Givens, and, and by the way, get, get back to my parents for a minute. I just made a death video on my mother. She got fleeced. Half the estate went to a cleaning lady uh, that, that, that fleeced my, my, my parents out of all their money. Uh, all of the jewelry was stolen. I mean, you don't tell me these things don't happen. So I, I just want you to understand, but Charles J. Givens, uh, that was an organization, and I was trying to, at that time, uh, what had happened was I had just uh, paid off all my debts. I, my student loan was gone, and uh, and I was trying to learn how to invest. And so I thought Charles D. Givens, they, they had this, you know, 67, 100-step plan where you can, you know, cut your insurance and do this, that, and the other. And I, I bought into it, and I spent $1,000. I uh, gave them some money. Turned out it was a total fleece. Yeah, yeah, sometimes we all fall for it, don't we? We all fall for it. But as a record, I was fleeced. And uh, so let's keep going. Who hasn't been scammed? And then I just wanted to talk about this. Who hasn't been scammed once or twice in their life? We cannot dwell on these experiences, but just move on. And so that's what I want to tell you. You know what? 
when you get fleeced, when you get taken, you know, don't dwell on it. Don't don't lose sleep over it. Don't chastise yourself. Just understand it's a learning experience and then move on. And you know what? You're going to be a better person for it. It's it's always good to get fleeced, you know, because I, I love the criminals. I mean, I, I thank God for them, you know, because as they, they do what they do, it makes you stronger. That's all I got to say. It makes you stronger. So let's just keep I'm hoping to keep this from happening to you. So let's state this for the record. There are no people overseas that you can help uh, by sending them cash in some means or fashion to make everyone rich. <laughs> if you feel they will make you rich, then contact your lawyer or someone to advise you. 99.9% .9 of the time, there is no prince, king, queen, or investment opportunity that is going to change your future. If there were, they would not be asking you for money or to click on a link. Another example of spamming scam is an email that comes from a trusted friend, and we've talked about that. A different email scam is from your friend or relative, usually goes something like this. Your friend is stranded overseas <laughs> with no wallet or money because everything was stolen while they were on vacation. So they were asking you to wire them some money so they can purchase papers to help them get back home. The reality is your friend's computer has been cracked using malware and the cracker has control of their computer, their email account, and possibly their accounts as well. So, I mean, how many times? I mean, that was, a, that was an old scam. I haven't seen that one for a while. But, I mean, it was, it was crazy and people were falling for it, you know. And, it, you know what, and, and it, it, think about it. I mean, if it was my best friend, I mean, I'd be like, wow, damn, man, I got to get him back from Nigeria, <laughs> you know, where, wherever he is. But then, of course, I'd have to question, what the fuck is he doing in Nigeria, you know. So, anyway, let's, let's get to number 15. Given the above phishing attacks, adopt a simple policy that if you did make the phone call, never give out any sort of personal or financial information. Now, I got to give my mom credit on this one. I was trying to uh, solicit the, uh, uh, the, the, the lawyers in Lynchburg, Virginia to help her out, and they solicited all her information. And then they told her, well, she made too much money and they couldn't help her. But this was after they collected all of her information. And she, and wisely, my mom goes, well, why the hell did you collect all my information and then tell me you can't help me? You know, so yeah, everybody wants your personal information so they can rip you off. Just saying, just saying. So, uh, so let's keep going. For example, I, I sometimes receive calls from my financial institutions about what they assume to be questionable activity on my account. I have their callback numbers programmed in my telephone. So I call them back on these program phone numbers and tell them to quit pestering me about the my less than $1,000 purchases. How many times? I mean, I'm going to tell you, I used to go on vacations and it was insane. I would sit there and I, you know, of course... You know, by the time I pay for the hotel room for a week and, and do everything else, I mean, it might be a, a $1,400 charge on my credit card. I guess it's getting worse these days. And then they, they would call me up. They would actually shut down my credit card so that I couldn't even charge anything to it because they said, well, it's, this is obviously fraud. What do you mean fraud? It's only $1,400 damn dollars. I mean, it, are people so poor that you can't afford $1,400 for a vacation? I mean, it was insane. But anyway, and, and so I would just, I mean, I te I'd tear into them, man. I, I would tear into them. And, and I check my accounts weekly so there's no need for low cash level or monitoring. So then we got up to step 15 <laughs> in the book. We, we, got, we got 20 more steps to go, man. Peace out. Stay free.